In this video, I'm going to show you how to create both tropical and arctic environments in Photoshop. We'll cover loads of tricks including light spills, snow and ice overlays and some colour grading thrown in too. Stick with me to the end on this one guys as it's chock full of tips. So let's jump into the tutorial. So as we're creating a tropical scene, the main elements are going to be obviously the jungle and the trees, the, the sunlight from the tropical, tropical environment and then the jungle inspired colour grade. Now, one of the parts what people probably think about when compositing a jungle scene is the foliage and the trees and how do you cut it all out and put it all together. Well, because these kind of images are quite busy and there's a lot going on in them, you can get away with quite a lot in cutouts. You can cut out things roughly, like this tree on the left hand side just there, and then bring it in. And because there's a lot going on in the, the images you're putting together, you can't re really tell. So what I usually do is I'll go through and find probably three or four stock images of different jungles that I like and then I'll just blend them all together and start playing around and obviously because there's so much going on in this image I don't have a massive plan of how it's going to look but I know from experience when you are putting loads of kind of messy elements together they kind of blend a lot easier than say if you was trying to create a street scene. So what I've done now is I've put a layer mask on and I'm just blending in and out the different layers to try and get a background jungle that works. So I'm putting the model in here see, to place her, see where she fits in the image and how the surrounding fits around her. And as you can see, the tree on the left, I've just kind of roughly cut out that out with the lasso tool. And at the bottom, the leaves are working. At the top, obviously, because there's some light behind those leaves, we may have to tidy them up. But you don't want to tidy things what don't need tidying. You don't want to give yourself more work. Only tidy the things that actually stand out and need tidying. So, getting this scene together now, I'm roughly putting it in and then just kind of experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't work. So the three elements uh, is obviously the jungle, the light and the colour grade. So once we've got this background jungle scene somewhere like where we want it, again just painting in and out non-destructively on the layer mask, I will then start adding light in. But as you can see, there's a lot going on in these jungle images so like I said it is very easy to get away with certain things. So now we have this jungle scene somewhere like how we want it. What we would want to do is now start playing around with, with the light. Obviously the, the background layer of the other image had some light coming down so what we want to do now is on the blank layer just start painting in that light through the leaves because if you ever see a jungle movie or a jungle image you usually get these shafts of light coming through the leaves and they're always coming downwards. And it's a good way to separate your main character from the background, but it's also good to create a very stylized image. But what you want to make sure is, as you can see, we added a tiger in the background as well. You want to make sure the light, what you paint in, is also affecting any elements what are in that light. So at the moment, what we're doing is adding a, a, a curves adjustment and then just painting in non-destructively on a layer mask the light onto that tiger. So it just blends in with the scene correctly. It looks like the light is interacting with that tiger and it just looks a lot better and realistic. So what we could do later on as well is we can, when we come to styling, we can add a lot more light leaks over these areas. And then to enhance that light, we can bring in light rear overlays. So this is from the Neo Stock Light FX Pack. And again, we want the light to overlap certain things and blend in with the scene and what we want to do is put our light overlay over the top of the all the other layers and then we can, with a layer mask, blend out those harsh edges and then it looks now like the light is interacting not only with the tiger and the jungle but also the model, which again is creating realism. That's what would happen in real life. You would add these little shafts of light and uh, there would be areas what are kind of got bits of light on, areas what are darker, areas what are brighter. The more imperfection you can put into an image, the more real it seems. So as you can see there, I just did use the curves adjustment just to uh, play around with the uh, the darks and lights of that light ray. Now, again, what we mentioned earlier, the third component to this tropical scene, to the environment, making it tropical, is the colour grade. And as you can see, I'm using a gradient map there. I uh, chose a dark green for the black. I then created a midpoint and had a more saturated midtone green. And then I had white for the highlights and I put that on and then I lowered the opacity. 
And then I'm creating now another gradient map and I'm adding more greens into this one, a little bit more saturated and some yellows into the highlights. And what that does now is it gives us the golden green feel. So as you can see, we've got a very nice green jungle feel, but then with the lights and the light rays, we've got this nice golden light coming through as well. And then a third gradient map. We are then just adding a little bit more of the golden feel to the image into the highlights so that's on top and then we lower that right down as you can see we've got now three different color um, adjustment layers and it's all adding to this very tropical jungle color grid and my favorite selective color adding some um, darks into the shadows uh, adding some reds into the dark sorry so you, we go to selective color, we change it to black, we add a little bit of red in and it just gives you that painterly feel to the image. So mix the painterly feel with the, the color, color grade, the jungle color grade, we get this golden tropical feel to our image. And I think it really adds to the jungle feel. It also stylizes it and makes it look a little bit painterly. So now I'm just playing with the contrast a little bit as well because we want the, the foreground to be darker than the background. Which is also giving us depth and it's again making the image feel quite painterly as you can tell. We've got the little monkey in the top surrounded by those light glows. And it's all about creating that scene, the realist, realism of the scene. If you was in a jungle and the light was coming from behind, the foreground would be darker. So let's move on now to creating the Arctic scene. In the Arctic scene, again, we need to think when we've got this scene, what can we add to the scene to make it feel more like a actual real environment? And we can also play around with uh, being a little bit more extreme with certain things. So one thing that I thought is let's have icicles hanging from the laptop. It's a frozen scene. It adds to the kind of the character of the image. So basically this was just a PNG that I brought in. And then with uh, a black and white adjustment layer, I just desaturated the color a little bit and I added that from the laptop. But we've got icicles hanging from the laptop. What we want to do then is we want to add a kind of frozen texture to the laptop as well. So it looks like the whole laptop's frozen. There's not just icicles hanging from a warm laptop. So basically I've got this kind of ice frozen texture online. I've just brought it in free transform. I've distorted it and placed it over the kind of the back of the screen part of the laptop and then I have lowered the opacity and I have put it on a light and blend mode and then I have lowered the opacity and then because we've done the top part of the laptop what we want to do is we, we need to make sure the bottom is done as well so again going through the, the same kind of um, process as we did for the monitor we want to bring in the other texture, we want to squash it down with free transform and just put it over the bottom of that laptop. And then with a layer mask, what we can do is we can um, use the warp to blend it to the actual shape of the laptop and we can use a layer mask to paint in and out if it's going over certain edges. So just using free transform now to, to do that. And then putting that onto a linear dodge blend mode. As you can see, we get some of the detail of the laptop coming through now. So we will, with a layer mask, erase the ice texture from those uh, laptop ports, or the, the where you plug the things in, and I guess that's the, the fan at the back. So with uh, on the layer mask now, I'm just deleting certain areas where the, the two textures were overlapping. And then just keep taking a look at the image. There's a little bit on the right hand side at the bottom what needs to be solved with a layer mask. So again, just using the warp now. So if you want to get to warp, it's, it's, it's Control T for free transform, then you right click and you can select the warp, free transform, and then you can just change the, uh, pull the handles and warp, whatever texture or whatever you've got selected. So again now, with the layer mask, just softening some of those harsh edges on that texture. Erasing the texture from the fan and the, the USB hole and the earplug hole, whatever they're called. <laughs> 
And now, again, thinking about the scene, what else can we add into the scene? We want some snow. Obviously, it's a snowy Arctic place. We want it to be cold. So what we do is we bring in a snow overlay and then to add a little bit of movement and dyna dynamic kind of feel to it, we want to put a motion blur onto that. So you go to filter, blur, motion blur, choose a good angle and then just put your amount of blur and then we can get that motion feel to it. And then also you can bring in a brush. So we you now we're using the snow brush. So if you play around with the snow brush, you can paint it on wherever you want on a blank layer and try just experiment with different snow brushes. Obviously as well, you want probably want to paint away the snow a little bit from covering the guy's face because that's going to be the focus of the image. But don't be afraid to experiment with snow brushes and snow overlayers. Sometimes you can get a really good feel, but you will need to refine it with a layer mask. And then using a snow brush, I wanted to actually put some snowflakes what have landed on him. So the snow, what the snowflakes what land on a person are going to be different to the snowflakes what are kind of blowing around in the air. So with a snowflake brush, I just wanted to paint some on his shoulders and maybe a little bit on top of his hat. Again, if, you, if there was someone in a snowy environment, the snow would be landing on them and settling on them. So we need to get that in here to add to the realism. And then you can, as you can see, just using a layer mask to paint it away from his face. Because again, if there's a person in the image, the focal point of that image is their face and their eyes. But I, I kept it on his beard because I guess if you've got a beard, it would attract snow. <laughs> I don't know, but... Um, I guess it would. It's kind of uh, one of those things like this, the snow seems to stick to your clothes, so I guess it would stick to your beard also. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing a little bit on his arms as well. And I'm just lowering the opacity on that snow. And it just takes the brightness down a little bit and makes it blend in with the scene, scene a bit more. And now on the blank layer with a different snow brush, like a thicker flake snow brush, I will start painting in the snow on the top of the laptop and then maybe some on his hat and his shoulders. Again, this is going a little bit overboard, making it a little bit more surreal, but I think sometimes these little touches add and it all helps to build the scene of this Arctic environment. So just painting that on there now. Again, this is just with a, 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 a snow brush. You can download these online. I'm not sure if I actually created this one or not myself. I might have done actually for a tutorial. So I'm just painting that on. And then you can always, if you want, attach adjustment layer and change the kind of the tone or maybe even a little bit of the color. But for now, that's looking pretty good. And then just like the tropical scene, it, to finish off our Arctic scene, we want a nice color grade. And again, it's always the same process. It's the gradient map maybe a couple of gradient maps and then a selective color to add some color into the into the shadows so what i wanted to do with this is go with a kind of cooler maybe purpley um or light blue color grade so we're going for this uh kind of cyan color here so we've got it in the midtones and in the shadows and we're keeping the we're gonna add some yellow or gold into the highlights and then let's just bring that on and again this can be playing around as well a bit of experimentation i could, did like the warm tones in the sky but it was taken away from the arctic feel of the rest of the image so using a, a, a photo filter i added a ice blue to that and that is the final part to our arctic environment so just remember when you create an environment you want to add color grades what work with that environment and you want to add characteristics from that environment into the image what are already there so i hope you enjoyed this and if you did be sure to check out my epic battle scene video where i create an environment and a war scene in it and thanks a lot guys i'll speak to you next time